Adam, what are we doing? That's camp. Oh, oh okay. it's technology. <laughs> Technology uh, changes, man, but you know, I mean, what are we gonna do? Uh, technology, I'll read it. technology changes, but who the fuck wears a suit to a night fight? <laughs> and now in stereo. Oh, well, well. Now in stereo. Geek time in stereo. Welcome back. I mean, I know you missed us, I missed us, and everything and all that, but the boys are back I mean, in town, and I mean, and of course, they're looking at you kind of funny because they're saying, where's the camera? But you know, in the days of modern technology, the camera is there, trust me. It's that. Okay. So, so, gentlemen, welcome back. So, well, what I wanted to do was, was like, in coming, being away for a while and coming back, you know, we had some time to think about it because a lot of people are used to us, you know, not just swimming in all of our fantasy worlds of the 80s and everything like that, but they're also used to us kind of like going off topic. But what I had was hoping for was is that maybe if we, you know, kind of like do a topic that would allow us to swim. And, you know, that allow us to go into whatever our uh, personal opinions are and what our favorite films are. So the best topic that I could think about was Game Changers. So what I had pointed out to uh, the boys was is that when I was reading, because I do read, not like they do, is that 89... You read, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. 1989 and 1999 are considered two of the biggest points of Game Changer films. And that's what I like to kind of like talk about. So that way, if we swim and we go over, if somebody talks about something that, you know, is in later well, than we'll earlier. We're going to disagree straight away. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you can't disagree with the public. I mean, you know, I mean, you know. The no, game but we, we can factor. disagree with, with uh, misinformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I present it with what we like to call the facts. The facts. Well, first of all, let's start with the facts. Because a lot of times when people think, a lot of times, you know, people go, who the hell are you guys? So... We barely introduce ourselves and talk about ourselves, and us actually barely let people know that where they can find us. Yeah, so I thought we should start with the facts. This is Geek Tasm. I'm Chase. I like to call myself the Hitchhiker, and you know, and now you call yourself the Hitchhiker. Yeah, yeah. Come on, tell us. Well, because I like to hitchhike onto all the different films you're talking about. All ah, right. Ah, ah, you mean you have a car? That's clever. No, I don't drive. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But anyway, so I'm Chase, I'm the Hitchhiker, and I'll be kind of like your moderator because these guys think they know more than me. Um, but to my left here is Colin, who also known as The Buzz. And uh, tell us a little bit about you, but Colin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm a bisexual. Uh, and the thick ass, that's here, 73 years of age. Yeah, yeah. You like dogs? Speciality, uh, yeah. Yeah, like Herschel Gordon-Lewis movies. Uh, but I tell you about him. Colin is a filmmaker, you know, like the auteur. And like his knowledge stems from his vision. And, you know, as well as running his own company, Chilling Media. But it all stems from bisexuality. Anyway, so... I do know Colin will say things very much off the cuff. But we'll by, for the record, I would just like to point out that Colin is, uh, 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 he says he's bisexual, but that tends to mean he will buy anything sexual. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that's what he meant, too. Yeah. You know, I could have said, I'm trisexual. Yeah. Well, you'll try anything. That's right. All right. So, Merv. I'm Merv, it's non sexual. <laughs> no, Merv is asexual. <laughs> no, I'm just A. Just leave it at that. A. Um, a. A. So, yes. So, Merge Perp is, uh... Oh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's 1983 all over again! I'm back in school! <laughs> anyway, Merv doesn't like any of the nicknames we've given him. But, so, Merv, where can we find you? Apart from Caligula. Apart from Caligula? Oh, like, ah, well, it's the only one, but that is my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> so, Merv, where can we find you, man? Tell us about you. So, about me? Oh, what would you like to know about me? What would you like to be? Five foot six? I used to be five foot seven, but I shrunk. What the hell's out of that? So... Yeah, Merv, you can find Merv at the fact that uh, Merv runs uh, his own Merv uh, movie quiz and uh, everything yeah. like that. So he's very knowledgeable, too knowledgeable for our audience. But, you know, it's always good to have a man who actually knows the facts. Can so whenever know? Chase gets the dates wrong, Merv will be right in there. I'm in the also, uh, <laughs> like, like Colin and like Mr. Uh, Chase or Mr. Mr. Hitchhiker over here, he doesn't look too much like... Uh, a hitchhiker today, no. Uh, no, uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> It doesn't look like the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, it could be a pickup or, 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 <laughs> or Sean Bean in the Far Superior remake. 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh I said somebody going to kill me now. Uh, yeah, yeah, sadly. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fellow filmmaker and writer and actor. And blah, 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 blah. Chase is also known as the Care Crawler. <laughs> so, game changers. <laughs> Just so that way, when I cut all of this stuff out, I can come right back to it right here. Yeah. So here we are. Right here. Hi, game changers. <laughs> if you haven't got it, I'm in the change position. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, now cut. <laughs> Now come to that bitch. So, gentlemen, game changers. Yeah. Let's just talk about game changers. In, let's just talk about game changers in general. I mean, game changers are usually like movies. What does game changer mean? mean? Yeah. Come on, tell tell the lovely folks at home. Game changers are usually like films that come along that kind of like go against the norm and just changes everything, and everything starts to follow that trend. You know, so it's the where some say. It start. It jumps off from there. So I'll give you a quick example. What happened off camera was we were looking at the uh, um, Blu-rays, Blu and so someone saw a picture of Hard Boiled. So I, of course, right from there, I said, "Oh yeah, man, you know Hard Boiled, fantastic film, but killer. That was a game changer." And then Merv quickly said, "No, it is better tomorrow," and quickly followed by a better tomorrow two. They are the true game changers of that kind of the... Didn't uh, they come after Hardball? Oh, no, no, no. Hardball was released in 1992. That was for a long time. Are you talking about its American release? An American, it, got a, it got an American release in 93 and in the UK. It got a Hong Kong release in 92. The whole mm. point of it was that uh, Better Tomorrow's 1 was 86 and Better Tomorrow 2 was 87. Now, I can at least say this. Here's a geek-tasm. Merv. Yo. Tai Lung, the star of Better Tomorrow. Tai Lung! Is most famous for, or I would like to say most famous for, one of his Shaolin classics. Just give me one. Just give me one. No. Well, what, what, Five Fingers of Death? He's not in that. Ow! Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what? You, if you're going to say Shaolin Temple or Mafia vs. Ninja or. No! Tai Lung! Seven Blows of the Dragon. Seven Blows of the Dragon. Seven Blows of the Dragon, oh, but also Tai Every Lung time. was like the, oh, the water margin. Also, <laughs> the water, Chang Chai's water margin. Also, I Ta prefer the TV show. So. Also, Tai Lung had a very dynamic dual um, set of films with David Chiang. And he was the man with the iron fist. fists. Fists, iron fists, which uh, now it's you shot. Not to be confused with the Marvel comics or that strange sexual practice. Hey, hey, you're not, you're not here to judge. <laughs> but then, yeah, I mean, okay, Hardboil for me is the pinnacle of the, um, the, the, the game the gun fu, gun fu yeah, sort right. of movie um, that, that, that really spawned it from, mm -hmm. you know, from Better Tomorrow onwards. Because you, you can go from Better Tomorrow to movies like God of Gamblers, Sing yeah. Fire. Thank you, Mr. Tarantino. You've seen that movie, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You have seen yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We know, we, yeah, we know uh, he tried to destroy it. Go. But anyway, moving on. I, I would say. Yeah, but Better I Tomorrow before, came. For me, Better Tomorrow, I saw that after I've seen Hardball and the Killer. Yeah, well, yeah, but, yeah but, but most people so, do. So, so why is that? Is it because it was. Because did we see these movies on video, yeah. and then we saw them out of order the same yeah, way, yeah, yeah. the and same way as Chinese Connection and Fifth but Fury the, were. But in the same way, well, in the same way, it's like you got to remember we couldn't have all those movies I've just mentioned mm -hmm. without a better Tomorrow's One and Two. It's that clear cut. So that would be even despite thing. the order you've seen them in, or we or we have seen them in, because. There was this kind of like Hong Kong renaissance in the, in the UK. You won't be aware of it's in the UK in the early 90s. When I was working in the, I was working in the video stores then. And we had, suddenly had this huge influx of movies because um, a company over here called Tartan Video bought, yeah, the, rights, Kong, yeah. bought the rights to uh, an awful lot of Hong Kong movies that never seen the light of day in this country before. Mm -hmm. Not from the late 80s. But then they released them totally out of order. So that's how we ended up with movies like Tiger on the Beat. And of course, there's this, I remember this really cool killer box set that came out with this great, great, on VHS, this is, mm. and it had like a, a Chow Yun fat on the cover with, with, with his fake, really bad gray hair that they gave him when he was in his, yeah. that's a disguise. <laughs> yeah. but I think, I mean, anyway. even more so than, I think Police Story was the biggest Hong Kong game changer. <coughs> Yeah, but that was a high. That was kind of the the, the bridge. That's between. where Jackie Chan game changer, which is stunt work. No, no. Whereas, I mean, me for a cop movie, it was, a, it was more the first Hong Kong proper 
cop mm. movies, uh-huh. which was, I was quite serious as well. Although if you watch the dub version, it's quite funny. But yeah. the original Hong Kong version is quite a serious. Well, I always found the, the telephone scene in yeah. the story is totally out of place. It's totally out of place, there. which is in the English version. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's why they took it out. But Police Story 2, it's a proper cop movie. It's a mm. proper. Mm. And that's, that was a big, and that was 85. Yeah. Mm. So it, that's kind of the hybrid to what was to come. Yeah, everything was there. But it's essentially like, like Wu came right. along and said, Wu came along, let's put those same sensibilities with gunplay that you would have with swordplay. Yeah. yeah. Completely take the we'll take, and, we'll and, take and, the fight and, styles yeah. out mm-hmm. yeah. and just leave it at bang, 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 bang. Take everything he'd learned from either both from mm-hmm. both from uh, from Hong Kong and um Western cinema, you know. Yeah. Pretty much pretty much John Wu created uh, a sense of ballistic opera. Yeah. And the reason why it's a game changer is because when the Americans stick their fingers into it, and basically the Americans, from their perspective, saw the killer first. And the killer was something that blew up on VHS on video, and everybody was telling everybody else about it. And then all of a sudden, John Woo started to get his American contracts and he started to do that crazy uh, hard target. Uh, hard target, hard target and yeah, yeah, yeah. talkers and says, I gotta go back. Hard target's a good example of, of, of what happens when uh, you're successful at something and then all the studios suddenly say, yeah, we need to get yeah. this guy. And then when yeah. they get him, they sign the contract, right, we love you, but you can't do this, that, and the other. Yeah, exactly. you know, And it's hence Jackie Chan's US we films. Every it. single one of them, every single one of them suck to high heaven. Exactly. Because exactly. they won't let him be Jackie Chan. No, 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 no. And they wouldn't let John Woo be John Woo. The closest I feel that the Americans have ever let John Woo get. And it's not that even great a movie, but it's so much better than Face Off. And that's Face Off. And that's the right. too. It's the nearest thing. It's like the, the, the only one to me that's passable. Everything else, why bother? Why yeah, bother? but see, also what's amazing about Face Off is, is and that. And including Mission Impossible. What's made them about face off is that because it is an Americanized with John Woo, but what it is 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 that it's taking everything from the killer and yeah, the yeah. royals, yeah, yeah. and they're just saying, you know what? I just love you as a painter, you know. And it's I feel every last that shot. As we have said, it's the only John, American John Woo film where you can tell it's a John Woo film. Yeah. Well, from the doves, you know, yeah, John Woo film. you know the lighting. To me, I mean, the, the, the gun, the, you know, the, the, when the you wish upon a star sequence. Is to me like the the, the most oh amazing. amazing. It, that's yes, great yes, because yes, that's, that's so un Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. And, and all yeah. the better for it. Yeah, and all the better for yeah. it. And, and it's and it's fantastic. Yeah. And I and I and I'm sure the studio probably hated it. Yeah. And the idea of like well, you know, it's just, it's just crazy the concept of using the star quality <coughs> actors that they forced on Wu. You know, Nicholas Cage trying to be John Travolta and vice yeah. versa because if like if you look at Infernal Affairs. You know, which became Eternal Affairs and all that kind of. If you look at Infernal Affairs, those two oh, guys. They popped it. Yeah. Eternal Affairs is completely. Yeah. You look at it's Infernal Affairs. I know. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, we look at Infernal Affairs. At least those two characters look the same. Right. Not on purpose, but I mean, yeah. like That's where so where if you switch them, yeah. you know, okay, I can get it. But I mean, Josh both had the punch, and then they tried to. Scientifically makes sense that okay, so Nicholas Cage is gonna be John Travolta, and let's give him the added weight gain, and then let's reduce his weight gain. Right, man. What they do? I mean, that was the worst part of that yeah, movie, though. Is what I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. I've seen it recently as well. And yeah, everything, I've seen so. it as my favorite. Actually, I will say actually one little side note about Face Off. It has my favorite American um, uh, supporting act- character actress in the whole of Hollywood and all of America, and that's. Uh, What's her name? And her name completely escapes me right there. Because she's your favorite. Yeah, she's my absolute favorite. No, she's the voice. And, and, and for all you comic book fans out there, uh, uh, she's also the voice of Amanda Waller in a lot of the old Bruce Tim cartoon shows. Oh, right, right, right. She's right. a CC Pounder, is it? Oh, CCH Pounder. CCH Pounder, who yeah. I think is a fantastic She actress. is a fantastic she should, actress. I swear to God, she, she, should, she should be as big a star as anybody else. Yeah, she anything. should be, but, you know, we won't go down that road, Murph, yeah. especially me and you, because, you know, I don't want to say why. <laughs> yeah. She, 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 she runs circles around Murrow Street. Yeah, know? tell me about she, her. She, tell she, me she's, she's she even survived Robocop 3. Oh, God. But moving on. Somebody had to. Anyway, so moving on. So, so as far as the game changer for Kung Fu, uh, this whole sense of action-based filmmaking and everything, would you agree that John Woo's... John Woo, um, he's the, he's the game changer. His it's triptych. Not so much, it's not so much the movies. It's John Woo himself is the game changer. Style. There you go. All right, fine. His, there you go. His style. style. John Woo's style as a game changer. But he's yeah, equally so as influenced by Hollywood as he is. Do you think so, though? Well, no, yeah. so. Absolutely yeah. not. Influenced so. in what way, though? Well, there's Mr. Sam Peckinpah for starters. 
skill sets. Yeah, but so what though? I mean, well, yeah. no, no, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from from John Woo. What I'm saying is, John Woo is the first to point that out. Mm-hmm. That what he's doing yeah, is well, nothing well, new. Yeah, it's, it's just his own yeah, spin on it. Well. Getaway, or... you know. I mean, the Wild Bunch. That's Cold a game changer. I know you mentioned from '89 or whatever, but let's go back to '69. The, the Wild Bunch is a humongous game changer. Absolutely. Uh, oh, so, yeah. all right, all right. Well, let's, from let's let's argue about that. Western game changers if you want to go back that far. So, you really want to say that the Wild Bunch, because of why? Because of the whole bullet blasting scene? Uh, and it's, the, it's the use of violence, uh, though. It's the use of violence beyond the fact that it's banging you there. It's, 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 it's instead of just like going like, you know, um, bang, we'll have a shootout in the movie. Well, so you got a point. No, no, no. We actually, we'll, we'll, actually we'll, we'll take our time. You have a point. Think People about die. This. It's not like you punch a guy, he falls off for a thing, wow. and then he lands on a, you know, a blanket. You, something like you gotta that. remember, right. Right. movies right, even right up to, and even after that, that uh, the same Western movies, uh, one of the cowboy flips, are still very much two guys shoot out, oh, I fall over, I'm dead. You know, mm-hmm. this show, it hurt. I mean, so this, has, this has consequence. It kind of, it kind of like, kinda like um, Clint Eastwood paying a homage to that and then forgiving. Absolutely, Except absolutely. That scene where the guy had the gut shot and everything. Well, the whole, but, the whole of the whole of that, the whole of that movie is about, you know, the whole of forgiving is about. Well, what if guys like that who have a lifetime of, bam, 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 it's going to wear you down. Yeah, it's going to wear yeah, you down. Yeah. But getting back to as a game changer itself, though, you know, you also got to remember the context. It's about mainstream cinema. Because yeah. there are other movies, there are Italian movies, etc. You know, uh, well, you're going to go on about. No, no, no. You could say uh, Fish for Dolls and Fish for Dolls. More of game changes. Absolutely, game changes. No one has ever seen westerns like them. Ever. No, 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 no. So they, and they this are. is a masterpiece. Yes. Well, we won't even go to that. That's a three. That's an entire brand of its own. That's not a game changer. That's just yeah. in a different class. It's just a good. It's just a good western movie. But I mean, just now, 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 now. Oh. Folks, you heard that on camera, folks. According to some people, Once Upon a Time in the West is just a good Western movie. Second greatest Western movie. It's, it's the same. Same. It's, Oh, I would argue it's the greatest yeah, yeah, Western movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saying it's better than the Frisco Kid? Hold on, man. <laughs> what I was going to ask was, you know, as far as a date check, <coughs> is that uh, where is um, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid? I wouldn't call that time. No. I was just going to ask. I mean, did that come out before or after? Wow, well, Bunch. Same here. It came up so it was a bigger hit. Was the biggest yeah. hit of that year. Yeah, but see, also too is it's also it, one of the first. I'll just say where the heroes die. Yeah, um, it's a spoiler. Do they? Uh, we do they? We do they? We don't know. We don't know. We never see them die. Nice it's free frame. Free. I will say this in terms of game changing. One thing, it definitely contributed to, I can't say for certain whether it was the first, because it probably wasn't, but it was the first, one of the first really popular, laid down the foundations of what we would now call a buddy movie. A yes. buddy movie. And without Butch and Sundance, more and more buddy movies probably wouldn't have been made. Yeah, and it's you know? so well written. And it's, and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's right, fantastically yeah. written. Um, yeah. It's superbly so shot. It holds up. off with the... So yeah, but no, but it's a good, it's a good ch- game changer though, because like, Heroes... You know, they didn't have, they didn't, in the Westerns, like you said, they always rolled off to the sunset. Shane, come back, Shane. Uh-huh. But then, you know, you know, with Butch. It's not a big silence in 66, greatest Western ever made. Italian Western, though. It's a Western. So, it's a Western. I know, but still, you know. Yeah, it's, like it's, 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 it's Italian. Italian. It's this little beast there. It's an Italian. But that's just an okay, okay that's just okay an okay Western. That's an American spaghetti Western. But, um. Navajo Joe. No, Navajo. I love Navajo Joe. That's not that's a game changer if you're if you're a Burt Reynolds fan. Great to anyone to come Yeah. Anyway, moving on. So moving on. Game changers. So I mean, so so far, I mean, those are. We're going in order now. Should we stay from like seventy onwards and see where we go? Well, I, mean, I think it should be like topical game changers. <coughs> I think what Merv pointed out, you know, Kung Fu is a game changer for action. Yeah. Well, you could say like through the seventies, Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. Game changer. Uh, well, we won't. Genres would be easier. Yeah. Genres would be better to look at the game changes within a genre. Yeah, and, then so there are, there and then there are game changes. So. And then there are game changes that affect the whole of either. Well, that's why it's game changer. Or what? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but it might be a game. I mean, okay, for example, then. Uh, see, there's another game changer that doesn't get its uh, credit where credit is due, and that's it's not a great movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's 1988, and it's Willow. Why is that a game changer? Without Willow, there's no Terminator 2. It's that there's no Abyss. Yep. There's no 
basically, the use of because the John Cameron, no. James Cameron. Yeah, James Sorry, Cameron. It's, it's okay. It's okay. So he's directed the two biggest movies of all time. Willow. 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 Willow, Willow, was, have Willow featured one Willow. sequence in it in which uh, a character, uh, if I remember, she's a, she's a witch or a witch or a sorceress, whatever you want to call it, and she's been turned into uh, a duck. And it's about her trying to get back to human form. And there's a sequence in it where a magical spell, little Warwick Davis, uh, is, is, is using magic to try and get her back. But she starts turning into other animals beforehand, and it's a real mixture of animals. And then sometimes these mixtures are hybrid sort of creatures. You have one you know, bit of this and the other. But it's the first, and I mean the first movie to use the morphing effect. Now, without that, and it's the same guys went on to continually develop. We had the abyss with the piece of the water thing going around. Uh, and then you had Terminator 2. Sorry? What about Crow? What about Crow? I had no CG in it. Yeah, it did. I didn't. Yeah, it did. Crow. Well, you got. The guy who transforms into a duck. You're thinking of Croc. There's a guy. Yeah, there's somebody who turns into a duck in, in Croc. I'll give you that. Okay, but that's you, what I. It's not about all. It's not about the animal. <laughs> it's about the effect. It's about the effect and the effect in it. Okay, it was the first morphing effect, and that was huge in terms of the, within the industry. That was huge. It was. It was it actually, was, it's pretty unfounded because a year later, the abyss comes out, and the whole sequence with the water that flows and mm-hmm. they call it the super. I just want you guys to realize that Merv did say I was right about Crow having that. Yeah, I, I, I said, I give like, yeah. <laughs> made me think. No, I, we'll he, be made, he made, no, I'm just saying, he just made me think that, like, oh, do you feel better? You're wrong again. Do you feel better? I do. Do you feel better? Do. That's all we need. That's yeah, all I think that's fine. Fine. We just want to walk. move on. But, um, <laughs> no, no, seriously, without, 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 yeah. without Willow, you have no Abyss, you have no Terminator, you basically have nothing. You have no Jurassic Park. Okay, uh, uh, the downside to that is because of the CG, the morphing sort of effect, we end up with Jojo Bix, but that's a whole other argument. Yeah. You know, you, know, you, can't, you can thank it for many things, but you can't blame it for anything. But a lot of people, I, I, think think we're talking, been, I, I honestly didn't know we were just talking about effects. Well, no, we were talking about game changer. We were talking about game changer. He, he, he brought that in. I brought that in because if, uh, to me, a game changer isn't necessarily the film itself. Right. There's something in there that, 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 that whether it is the movie, Right. Itself, or there's something in it that adds on to the issue. The big I one, will agree with you on this, though, Merv, is the fact that, that if the effect in that film makes uh, everybody else think, <coughs> okay, we're going to invest this and then we're going to do this, then it makes the film itself a game changer. Yeah. I would never have thought of Willa as a game changer, right. but you know, I, I mean, there's a lot of unsung, uh, there's a lot of unsung sort of movies out there. In the same way, there's a lot of unsung filmmakers, uh, innovative filmmakers, who never get the praise, who never get cited for doing things that we now have completely No, no, you're right. But see, but what I think it is important, though, is like when I mentioned Crow, as well as uh, I think there is a, 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 some type of an effect in Hawk the Slayer, but I know there is one in uh, Lady Hawk. That's right. You know, it's the fact that, that the still effects were really. No, no, I'm trying to say they weren't, they weren't. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I was going to say. That the effects were really still crude. So when you point out Willow being this digital uh, picture, yeah. that's what I'm agreeing yeah. with you on, man. Uh-huh. I'm not fighting, yeah. I'm not fighting. But I'm just saying you that there is not be a fight if you lose. No. <laughs> I am fighting now. But I am trying to say is I agree with you that it's a game changer. Uh, 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 what's supposed to be a game changer? Star Wars was a game changer. Star Wars was a game changer on so many different levels. Yeah, it Completely. definitely was. Nobody would want it to be, but it definitely was a game changer. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a huge game changer. Biggest game changer in the 70s. Blacked out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it Without came on the hills with George. Well, that, well, there's no well, that Superman was already a Superman. Superman, Superman, Superman. Superman. There would be no Star Trek. Without Richard Donner, there wouldn't be a Superman. But, um, oh, that's true. Yeah. I looked at, uh, have you, I should, have I you think seen the 70s? I also think the Omen was a, was a game changer. It gave that big <sighs> budget horror. Yeah, but I would say, I would probably uh, no, say, I would 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 say, but I think even you can't have Omen without the Exorcist. Don't get me wrong. I prefer the, the Omen to the Exorcist. But I actually yeah, think the Omen was the film. first horror popcorn movie. It was the first the masses went to see the Omen. Was about I think we the one. Wait, 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 wait. I think the reason why. supposed to buy it with the Omen. They went to like, wow. Oh, yeah, exactly. I think, think, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I think the reason why is because you had those murders of those priests. Yeah, you know, it was and, a, and the Exorcist I, didn't do that. The Exorcist only had one family in the house. And a priest trying to help, one priest trying to help them. So but the old man said, you know what, forget this, let's do all this other I think the only was, it was set piece. Oh, was it ever, you know. Uh, it was the biggest, it was the first Cue my impression of uh, Patrick Troughton as the priest. 
It was a set piece movie. Right. It was the first that you know they had. Uh, they had six or seven deaths, and they built mm-hmm. a whole shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they were called like the seven. Uh, seven lives of the kingdom. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 in that aspect, that's what I mean. They have more murder. It's the same here. It, it just, it's just a better film. It's, it's a better yeah, film, better. and also production value wise, it's classier. It's yeah. lovely, you know. Again, because Donna. Donna, I mean, Jerry Goldsmith. It's funny because Jerry Goldsmith, a lot of people seem to think that his score was just basically a classical score that's been revamped. It was all completely new, you know. He, he, he wrote what he called a black mass, you know. Yeah. Mm. And then after, I think Superman was a game changer in terms of. Superhero movies, you know what I feel about. Well, I, well, actually, 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 people say it was Batman more than Superman. But no, I, I think I, I, I think I disagree. With that. I think Batman. I think. Well, no, I will tell on. you why. Go on. Merchandising Batman. Uh, was that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different. Yeah, thing. But Back, it's, Batman's, it's, no, I'm Batman's sorry. most hyped right. movie yeah. in history without because Batman. of the merchandising. It was a game. Batman was and a makes game. it a game changer. This is what I just said. Yeah, but it was a fantastic movie. But in terms of movie, it was a fantastic movie. I'd say Superman's the, still to this day, and even you, I mean, when Chris Nolan went into doing his Dark Knight trilogy, he said, um, you know, Super, Donald Superman one, Superman the movie is, is the benchmark. It is. Uh, still. Or it still is of of a comic book superhero movie. It mm. might not. I mean, some people have argued now that you know that's been surpassed by the Dark Knight and this and the other, mm. but it's still the absolute benchmark. Yes. Now, it's, what's interesting about that is it took ten years for a studio. To go no, eleven years, sorry, to capitalize on the success of the Superman movies. Mm. I mean, did, did, okay. I think I think with Batman of the new generation of, of what you still see <coughs> is based on the eighty nine Batman. Yes, mm. the hype machine, and that's more of an industry thing as well. And what based on what, that, that is yeah. all about Bruce Wayne. I, I, I agree. I agree with like what Tim Burton said. Why he was really reluctant to come back and do Batman Returns, and, but only he'd only ever do it on his own terms. Was uh, the fact that. The Batman movie, Batman, the movie itself was part of the package of this whole Batman advertisement thing. You buy the T-shirts, you have the toys, you have the prints out, you have this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. You know, you had all these things. Oh, and by the way, there's a movie out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not, not the movie didn't drive the hype. Yeah. The hype drove the hype. The hype drove the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah, and, yeah and so and forth. Hype, yeah. And that's still with us to these Each year we get, it, you know, we, we, we're, yeah. in the, we're now, we're now, it's, it's what with May now. We're now already in the blockbuster season, it, it, which begins early and earlier now. Mm-hmm. We've got this, this has come out, that has come out. We've got Godzilla next week, we've got the X-Men off. And these, every week we're now we're hearing, it's the biggest thing ever, 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 until next week, which then will be the biggest thing ever, ever, ever. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, of course, three weeks later, that'll be completely forgotten. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and like, I mean, it's so true what, um, what uh, Richard, the actor Richard E. Grant said in, in, his, in his film diaries book, which is great, because no matter how life-changing or affirming or fantastic, Brilliant, really fantastic, superb, the greatest movie ever made. Six months after its release, it'll be gathering dust in a video shop store. Uh, I yeah. kid you not, you know, no, 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 it's, it's completely disposable. And yeah. I think, and that's in terms of the game changing thing. You look at Batman, but yeah, it is a game changer, yeah. but not for the reasons I'd say that you're citing. Well, yeah, I mean, but I was citing for the merchandising. I was citing oh, right, okay. for actually the movie. I mean, I do agree with you that Superman is indeed one of the greatest benchmark films ever made, and it didn't launch the whole sense that we can make superhero movies. But then again, is that being said, in the modern day, what is the game changer for a superhero film? Since? Blade. My man. I only really Blade. say that. Blade. Hands down. No, no, no. no I, the reason why I say that is because the magazine will say it was X-Men. No, it's Blade. It is Blade. It's Blade. It's that Blade, that Blade, Blade, man. That Blade, you have nothing. And it had nothing to do with... It's Blade. Blade is the game changer because not only is he the Marvel character, which you, I know you don't care about, but it's a game changer because it actually launched the whole believability that we could make these movies and make money out of all these, you know, different characters. Dr. Fullership. Definitely not Dr. Lumber's punch. Dr. Lumber's punch. But Blade definitely Does he is have to wear, like, changer. the skull thing? It's terrifying. We've got to go with some of the game changes and genres and stuff. First Blood is the... First Blood, yes. Yeah. Is, is the yeah. action, yeah, absolutely. Well, Especially. it's also kind of like a, a way of redoing the war film as well. Yeah, no one has ever done it like no. like that had been... The coming home yeah. aspect. It's right? interesting. And we don't mean John Voight. <laughs> the war was at home. The two, the two, yeah. the, I'd say the two action game changers are... Let me try and get a tw- a tw- a 20 years apart oh, okay. with... with, um, with uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, with, 
what I like and what I think is a game changer are completely different things. Um, 20 Years Apart, with First Blood being in 82, 20 years prior to that, the game changer in terms of action, adventure, sort of thrill rides and sort of thing, it's just plain and simple, it's Doctor No. Doctor no. It's Doctor No. You know, which obviously by the time you spy movies, well, not just spy, but not just spy movies. Movie. You got to remember, beyond spy movies, it, it, it brought huge action spectacle. Yeah. Okay, and the only action spectacle we had prior to the bomb movies were things were usually kind of historical epics with casts of thousands. Yeah, like yeah. Ben Hur and all that. The stuff. Stuff. But hold on for a second, Doctor No didn't have that much action in it, did it? I mean, well, what no, it was big. It, it was. It looked big. It, it felt big. It felt How about that? It, it felt big. big. It did look big. What was the biggest from Russia? From Russia just went. Boom. Each, you know, and then, of course, yeah, by, yeah, the time, yeah. by the time you get to say Goldfinger, which which took that formula and Goldfinger completely still, forever. you know, uh, and, you know, from then onwards, it's like right, boom, 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 bigger, boom, bigger, boom. Bigger, 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 But you can't yeah. do any of that without Doctor No. Without Doctor No. Without Doctor No. Without Sean Connery. Absolutely game changer. Fast forward twenty Water years. Friend, fast friend, forward twenty Water years. Like the action movie is really less action and more. A you, thriller. you think through the seventies, there wasn't many. Action no, there isn't. I mean, even a movie such as no, these days, there was a lot of dialogue days, driven action. Something movies. like this is considered to be an action movie, yeah, and it's not. It is not at all. Yeah. Yes, there's action sequences in it, but it's still first and foremost a thriller. Now, the first Bloods were one. After, after twenty thriller. minutes into First Bloods, you are on an hour and ten minutes. Action. Just, you know, apart from the... Uh